So it's great because you heard me even better before. So perfect. Can you all see the picture? Yes. yes. Great. I'm very happy to be here. And just before we start, please take a look at this picture. And I just want you to think with, with me, where's the limit? Where's the limit between the outside world and the inside of this home? Because for four years, I've been studying architecture. I've been thinking about it. And I've still not figured out the real answer about this. It's such an ambiguous space. It's really weird. And the limit, the real limit between everything that is outside and inside is lost. And I love this. I really love it. Eventually, when you talk about architecture, when you think about architecture, there's always this, this very thin limit between outside and inside. Here is one of Oscar Neymier's architecture. It's a museum in Brazil. And there's a whole lot of things to say about the museum, its structure, the plaza that has created, the public space. But what I really love about it is this slow slope that gets you up there. Because there's so many other ways to get inside of this building. You could have just put a small stair over there. But there is this architectural promenade that is created, this moment of transition that helps you go from the outside to the inside. And I think it's beautiful. Eventually, if I ask all of you to think about cities in mass plan, our new technologies will lead you to think about those spaces, or at least those documents, which is satellite views. And there's so many information in those documents that they're not so easy to, hear, to use for urban planners. What usually urban planners start to do is think about them as built masses, black and white figures that will help you understand everything that is constructed and everything that is left aside, the void, the empty space. And as much as I love those spaces, I think that they lack something, that those documents lack understanding or at least incorporating this space. Because it would be represented in black, right, as a built space. But it's such a non-black space. It's a very open, wide, and it's clearly oriental, which is because it's in Sharabiye. And it's clearly created by light and wind, only light and wind. And it's just sad to see that this space is constructed and is represented as a black space in those plans. Eventually, in Lebanon, you see those kind of spaces everywhere. Those in-between spaces that I was talking about. Those inside out, those weird, ambiguous spaces that are beautiful because they're very ambivalent and very polyvalent. <laughs> and you can use it for so many things, so many different things. And it doesn't matter how much money you invest in those spaces. It can be something very simple like here. It's just an inside out space or something more complicated, you start, finding it, you start finding it everywhere. In churches, in mosques, in houses, in museums. In Lebanon, we just love this in-between space that is, very, very, you, that is very matched to our climate, that is very weathered. And eventually, this space, this space speaks a lot about us. It's a beautiful zone that really understands who we are as a society. And I'm fascinated by, by this space. Because eventually, when you think about it, the way it evolved and the way we think about our homes, the traditional home, it's not only the three, ar the, the three arches home with the red roof. It started with this simple thing, the kuch of the shepherd. Eventually, you can expand to a liwan or a riwak. And you don't need more rooms or more living rooms or more bathrooms. You're just still the same family. What you need is this beautiful, very fantastic space. I'm going to develop this a bit later, but very special space that we usually call, of course, there are technical words, liwan, riwak, but we usually call it the staiha. And you probably all notice that in old villages, the staiha is a super important typology of our houses. Because it speaks a lot. It says a lot that, it says just one blank statement that we love to share things. We love to gather in this in-between space. We love to share coffee or manouche or all the, all the fantastic culture, cultural and gastronomy that we have in this space. And it could be a staircase. It could be a real constructed liwan. It could be anything that you want to use just to show that you are a welcoming resident. You gave a very private part of your home, because legally it's private. It's your own. You paid for it. But you just decided to give it back to the street, or at least open it to the street. And we have very special words for this very special space. We have tfaddal, we have mayil, we have hawil. Those beautiful little words that just says to a complete strangers, to complete strangers, please come in. 
please get inside of my home, not in the very intimate space of the living room, in this in-between beautiful space that is the Stayaha. Get inside, please share with me a cup of coffee. And just to think, just now that I think about it, coffee and the little chefs that we use are, 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 are very well constructed because they're so, super small and their size is, of course, because our coffee is super strong and we need it, especially in times like this. But it's super strong and it's super interesting because we don't drink just one cup of coffee. We drink so many. And we prefer to actually serve coffee than drinking it. It's this movement that usually happens in the Steha that I, find, that I really find fantastic. And it's linked to the Meza. <laughs> it's linked to the fact that we like to share. We like those moments of gathering, like such as this one, that <laughs> would, I would happily do in a Steha, although we can't fit in there. But I think this space that I was trying to describe is not only a Lebanese typology. It's a zone that is fascinating because it speaks for who we are. It explains clearly that we are some, some society that loves to share, that loves to gather, that really loves to <laughs> drink coffee with friends, with strangers. And I think this is even more interesting. We love to have strangers come in. And when you go into villages, when you go, when you go right, right here outside in Jaitewe, think about what you see. Think about our architecture the way I try to really, really understand it. Because it's not only buildings for us to live in, it's monuments that explain who we are and who we want to be, and it's some kind of solution to understanding our identity. And this is an idea worth to share. Thank you. <laughs>